Healthy Talk with Dr. Michael Smith, MD. And now, here's the country doctor with a city education, Dr. Mike. Are there natural ways to safely lower cholesterol? My guest is Dr. Mark Estren, author of Statins, Miraculous or Misguided? And he's going to help us answer that question. Dr. Estren, welcome to Healthy Talk. Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Mike. It's a pleasure to be here. I really like your book, and uh, it's called, as I said, Statins, Miraculous or Misguided, and people can get it on Amazon.com. And, you know, I, I think you do a good job in, in teaching about statins, the positives, the negatives. It's a really good book. Um, but what I want to focus here with you are the are the natural ways, because um, let's be honest, it, it, Dr. Estrain, whether we you agree with this or not or like it or not, people are scared of them. Um, a lot of people are trying to stay away from them, and they are looking for more natural things. And I think you do a great job in your book talking about natural ways, so you do address that. So let's talk about diet and exercise first, and then we'll talk about supplements that you like second, okay? So in your book, you mentioned 10 dietary tips in your book, and I want to go just through a couple of those, and, and you can uh, uh, educate us on these. The first one, obviously, are the fats. You say limit saturated fats and absolutely no trans fats, and I like the fact that you say limit saturate, not avoid them because they are important. Explain that a little bit. Well, the fact is the body needs a certain amount of fat, and one of the things that happens, you've talked about this in terms of diets as well, one of the things that happens is people go to extremes and they try to do something at a zero level, which in fact is impossible because the body needs certain things in order to function. The body needs cholesterol in order to function. So you can't sit out, you can't sit there and say, let's find a way to have no cholesterol because you would die. So that's not a practical approach. But in terms of fats, you need a certain amount of fat, a certain amount of dietary fat, and a certain amount of saturated fat in order to have your body function properly. Your food is a fuel, and in order to fuel the body properly, it has to have certain components. The problem that so many of us have is that we have too much of certain components and not enough of others. And as a result, our diets are out of balance, and as a result, our bodies go out of balance. The functionality of our bodies will go out of balance. If you can when put you look the body at total f- better balance, you will be healthier. Right. It's that simple. When you look but it's at, also difficult when you look to at, do. Yeah, when you look at total fats, when you look at like how much fat I'm eating, is there a percent you like, uh, 80% unsat, 20% well, saturated? If, is there some, can, some ratio you If you can knock dietary saturated fat down to 7% or so, which is not, again, not easy to do, but if you can do it, that's probably about the best best you can do. You need some, but you should have a very small amount of the saturated fats. And as for, uh, as you made made a reference to trans fatty acids, which is also called uh, partially hydrogenated fats, it's really better to avoid those altogether because really there's you, some, some hydrogenation is okay, but we don't really know how much is okay. And there may be a safe level, but if so, it's a very low level. So it's better to avoid that I, altogether. I would, yeah, I think it's, you know, since we don't know, I, I do believe it. I, my personal belief in looking at how it's metabolized in the body and what's going on, I just, I like my patients and my friends, family, just to stay away from trans fat as much as possible. I think there are natural, healthier fats you could just focus on. What about some oils for cooking? Um, I, you know, this, people get confused here. Give us the top two or three oils that are good heart oils. Okay, the, be- the best oils are, oil- canola is best widely available, relatively inexpensive oil. But if you like olive oil, and in particular organic olive oil, if you're willing to search that and pay for it, that's excellent as well. You can also use macadamia nut oil. So those would be three. The easiest one to get clearly is canola, and canola is good. So these are, these are options, but again, avoid, avoid palm oil and avoid various other oils. Avoid mixed oils if you possibly can. Just try to focus a little bit on ones that are going to be better for your system. So I also notice in this list of uh, dietary tips, you you talk about uh, soy protein a lot, and you talk about ground flaxseed specifically. Let's start with the soy. Why are you suggesting soy soy protein for people? Well, if you if you take soy protein daily, this again, this is part of trying to balance. So you get you have a, you have a good uh, a good protein intake there. Uh, 
Uh, the usual recommendation is it would be about 20 to 30 grams of soy protein daily, and you can either get soy through food, if you like soy, if you like to cook with it, if you like tempa, which is a type of soy. Uh, if you prefer to use protein powder, you can use you can put soy protein powder in uh, in smoothies, or, for example. And that is it's a good protein, and it's it is one that is not going to raise uh, cholesterol, and that is going to be again, it's just better for body, and it's a better okay. way than using than in consuming saturated fat. Now, why the ground flaxseed? Because be- prior to that, in your book, you talk about omega-3 foods and the, and the importance of omega-3 oils, and then you have this whole section just on ground flaxseed. Is it is there more to flax than just the omega-3 there, the nice omega-6, omega-3 balance? I mean, what is it about flax that made you write a whole little section on it? Well, the, the thing about the thing about flaxseed is that uh, in a lot of the things that we're talking about now are best done in combination. It would not make a lot of sense to have a quarter cup of ground flaxseed every day and ignore all the other possibilities, including the omega-3s and including soluble fiber and including nuts. Nuts are a wonderful dietary supplement, di- component of diet. So really, this is a matter of changing your overall attitude toward food consumption, toward the way you fuel your body. So you should not take any one of these suggestions or recommendations out of context and say, well, I'll load up on ground flaxseed and that's going to be really wonderful. What we haven't talked about is the primary recommendation that, uh, that lots of people, including me and probably including you, recommend, which is a significant increase above what most people use as their intake of fruits and vegetables. Because... The use right. of produce right. Way above is what, so right. important on so many levels. Five to seven daily servings, nine daily servings, many people would recommend. This is, the this more is the better. really good The more stuff. the better. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I, you know, I, I wanted to go into things, exercise. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, the rest, the rest of these things are almost supplementary. If you, if you have seven right. to nine right. daily servings of fruits and vegetables and you don't have any ground flaxseed, that's fine. Right. Okay. So the main thing we got to get those fruits and vegetables in. Watch those oils you cook with the omega threes. Uh, you know, and a nice balanced approach to things. I wanted to talk about exercise, but we're going to move on because I want to get to the supplements. So I'm going to say one thing about exercise. We need to do it more. Right. Everybody, listen. Get out. Move. Sweat. We got to. We got to burn some of that excess calories. That's going to help. Let's go into the supplements then uh, for lowering cholesterol. Give me, Doctor Estren, your top three supplements for lowering well, cholesterol. Well, I, I will, I'll throw a couple of these at you. Uh, and just so you know, the material in the book is actually drawn from multiple sources, and I was trying not to specifically endorse one source over another, but you have correctly perceived that I do believe that supplementation is important and that it's a good idea to have certain kinds of foods and consume certain kinds of nutrients rather than others. Um, red yeast rice extract. Now, that sounds like something very exotic, but in fact it's not. It's a little bit exotic in the United States and in North America, but in China and Japan it's very, very common, and it's common, commonly used by Asian Americans in the United States as well. It, it's mm. a food preservative. Uh, it, it contains an ingredient that inhibits an enzyme that is involved in cholesterol synthesis. Right. In other words, so that's red yeast rice. Yeah, so that's red yeast rice, and it has the same component as what you find in statin medications called lovastatin. Give me, you got about fifteen more seconds. Give me another supplement you like besides red yeast rice. Well, the the, the other one that I would talk about would be plant sterols and plant stanols, which are, and again, we're back with plants. Uh, these are these are um, these are substances. Right. Uh, that are found in plants and that are ways of reducing cardiovascular risk in general, not only the, not only cholesterol, but there are various ways of doing this. And, so and the book are, is called Statins. Statins, Miraculous or Misguided by Dr. Marcus Strand. You can get it at uh, Amazon.com. This is Healthy Talk on Radio MD. I'm Dr. Mike.